This is Jackie, and I'm here with Carly of Candiria on what feels like day 85, but yeah. I mean, we're in a nice Jones Beach, yeah. New York slash sort of New York City warp tour. How are you doing so far today? I'm enjoying it so far. It's a lot cooler than Vegas. Vegas a lot cooler Vegas. than Arizona. Yeah, and I'm so glad. I mean, I loved playing out there, but the heat was intense. This feels amazing. You got the, the breeze off the ocean. We got seagulls yeah. that chime in every once in a while. That's yeah, not so I, bad. We were waiting on the lunch line, and I think the seagulls were attacking some of the band dudes, but you know, I was watching. I wish I had a camera for that. I was so happy. It was just so cool. No, nothing against the bands, but you know, I like to be entertained. I love birds. Alfred Hitchcock, Hitchcock the movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing better than like watching hardcore guys yeah. dodge a oh, yeah. seagull. I mean, yeah. come on. I, yeah. I would be entertained by I'm that. Like, it's yeah. going down. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> Someone's got inspiration for their next song yes. lyrics. There you go. Yeah. New album coming out. Exactly. The birds. The birds. <laughs> now you guys have been together for quite a while. Yeah. What do you attribute to your band's longevity? Um, just... I think, honestly, just uh, we love creating music. We love pushing the boundaries. Sometimes we get at each other's throats when we're trying to, let's say, um, get in, uh, push like an idea. But I, but that's fun to us. We're from Brooklyn, and we kind of love pushing each other's buttons. No. Uh, yeah, you know, you, you wouldn't be surprised being a New Yorker how we like to just do that. Yeah, I don't know where that came from. But, um, and like you know, a genuine love for each other. You know, when we were we got into an accident in um, 2002. And that kind of changed things. Um, you know, went through like a rough patch. But now that we're back together for this new record, um, we just, we realized how much we miss each other once we got into the studio. It was very cool. You miss busting each other's chops. I understand. Oh, yeah. It's going like, we just superimposed some cool pictures of our guitar player. He went to stay at with his wife in a hotel and came back. And we have all these pictures of him. It's amazing. Him and <laughs> E.T., Colt 45, Billy D. Williams. It's amazing putting his face on everything. It's, this is what we do. Yeah. yeah, you got to keep busy sometime in exactly. those long trips. <laughs> um, how has the band evolved sonically from, let's say, uh, s s surrealistic uh, madness yeah. to um, while they were sleeping and, and more? I think now uh, we're focusing more on songwriting, song structure. And, and even though it's not the typical song structure or whatever, we um, really focused on just telling a story. Like this new record's a concept album. It's the first time we've ever done anything like that. And... Um, we really just implemented like a lot of melody and everything was really, really thought out. This is the first record um, that we produced as like a whole all of us together. I think it's, I think that was cool. And sonically, like if you look at the first record, Surrealistic Madness was more just like death metal and uh, kind of like, let me see what I can do. I'm like, I think there's a song on there where, I've listened to the record in a while, but like <laughs> we have a microphone in a car and the horn's going off and there's, you hear the dog in the background, it's like a squeaking door, and we called it a song. So just, <laughs> so let's, you know, it's, you know, why not? get away with it. Yeah, and, you know, people loved it. I'm like, I can't believe I just did this, and people love it. I'm like, man, whatever. We can pretty much do anything at this point, so. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> what are the risks involved with putting out um, a more concept-based album? Hmm. Um, I or did you have any trepidation when you decided this is the route we're going to take? Yeah, I, I think one of the risks are, because after, and I realized it more after I was done with this record, what if I don't want to continue this? You know, what if I don't want to continue the story? Now I'm in a situation, and it's funny that you asked this, because I was just thinking about this. I'm like, do I continue it or do I not? So, no pressure. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> thank you, Jackie. <laughs> 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 you know, right? and about, um, but I think I'm going to finish it because... I want to know what happens, you know, and I, I wrote it, but I want, I wonder what happens here. Um, but the, on the, on the flip side, one of the most beautiful things about it is just seeing how it just uh, set my imagination free. There were like no boundaries. Usually when you write a song by a specific topic, um, all right, let me just stay within the confines of what happened here. But when you're writing something from scratch and you're just pulling just out of your imagination, getting inspired by everything, by news, by um, people's lives, things that you're seeing, I literally could go anywhere with it. So it's like, and that's one of the things that I was completely impressed by. It's like, well, I'm, I'm set free. I'm like, my imagination can go anywhere. And, and that on its own is pretty addictive. Yeah. Nice, yeah. nice. Music, the music industry has certainly changed over the years that yeah. you've been involved with it. What do you see or what do you consider success in 2017 where album sales are no longer the pinnacle? Success is being able to have a bowl of cereal in the morning and play a song. No, I'm joking. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would have been successful. It's like cookie crisps <laughs> yeah, you know, and really nature. good music. <laughs> yeah, things of that nature. No, success is basically doing, um, putting out a record that you stand by 
and being able to live off of it. You know, kind of like, you know, when you when I first got into this thing, you know, I, I wanted all the typical um, stereotypical trappings that, that comes with being in a band or whatever. That gets old real quick, not really quick. But now it's like, you know, I just want to do, do what I love and get paid for it and like travel, go on stage and get to meet fans and, and just sit back and there. I'm like, wow, like, I was just saying yesterday to my friend, like, wow, I can't believe this is my job. You know, it's like, uh, you, know, you know, I love it. Of course, tour bus breaks down every now and then and we're calling Luca. Luca, help! <laughs> I'm stuck in Nashville for three days. The bus driver just left me, which has really happened, by the way. <laughs> and like, uh, but you know, you survive that and you move on and like, I still wouldn't trade this job for anything in the world, yeah. What are your thoughts about um, music streaming sites and, and sort of that route that music industry is taking now? I'm glad that you asked that because as an artist, um, of course, it's, it's, it's not that profitable. I, uh, Luca, I'm going to ask you this. Uh, I think it's 100, I think 100 spins, you get paid like 11 cents or something to that effect, something like that, yeah. right? So, um, um, but as a music lover, oh, it's the best thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, saying, I'm like, I'm like, and I tell this everyone, I'm like, wow, you know, for an artist, it sucks, but this is amazing. I literally could, like, listen to everything, and I'm getting turned on to so many different, like, artists, and now it's like, if I hear something, like, on a warp Tour, you know, you hear a band that you like, well, let me just stream the album. You know, if I don't like it, I don't have to buy it, um, but if I like it, I'll listen to the album, I'm like, this is amazing, and what I'll do is, I'll go out and maybe buy a vinyl, you know what I mean? Go out and buy, like, a t-shirt, but I get, when I find something that I like, I'll obsess over it. And I'll listen to that record probably for like a month or two straight so I can get everything out of, out of it. You know, so that's because of streaming. Yeah. I, I think it's a, it might be the necessary evil of this yeah. time period, yeah. but if it helps motivate people to either yeah. buy something tangible later yeah. down the road, a yeah. T-shirt or a concert ticket, yeah. I really hope that on the, the, on the musician aspect yeah. that it does balance out if it, even if it comes around later on. I, I, mean, I, def I definitely like, hope so because it's, like I said, I, I love it. And, um, and, for research, even as like a songwriter, it's like, all right, where do I want to go in the next record? I listen to um, this, there's this Billie Holiday greatest hits, like 50 songs on there. I listen to that like for like months or whatever, and I, just for a 45 second part on the new record, just I'm like, all right, let me see, let me try Billie Holiday S type of vocal. And nice. yeah. Well, whatever. Good source of inspiration. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Speaking of inspiration here at Warped Tour, there are tons of different bands. Why did you guys decide to play Warped this year? Um, it's something that I've been wanting to do for years. Plus, management kind of persuaded. <laughs> <laughs> I like the honesty. Uh, some of our guys are like, I don't know if I want to do it. I'm like, you're going to do this. I'm like, all right, maybe we'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> Good, you are. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I, and I always wanted to do a summer festival and uh, um, on a bus, right? Cause yeah, and like oh, you know something I've you know, I rode on a private jet before like with my old van I'm like okay check that off the list summer festival tour bus and I gotta tell you it's not what it's cracked up to me <laughs> <But> <laughs> I'm like you know because when I envisioned everything you know with like you know pineapples falling from the sky or whatever when you step on the bus and like people just putting jackets on you as you just walk through the crowd yes right that didn't happen because I'm dealing with 120 degree heat I had to send my merch guy home after four days because he had a heat stroke and a kidney infection. So now we're working with the merchandise. Tour bus was breaking down every day. Uh, AC, day one, uh, I think it was Phoenix, that uh, air conditioning was, like, wasn't working, whatever. And like, so it was brutal. But the good thing is now we're riding around in Willie Nelson's old tour bus, which gator skin interior. Big pimpin', it's pretty cool. <laughs> so, so, you know, to, to, that's the best positive spin I think you could ever put on that experience. Like, didn't have to, didn't have air conditioning, lots of creature comforts gone. Yeah. Willie, Willie Nelson. Nelson. That's all I have to say. In fact, we named the bus Willie. Willie, if you're out there, we named the bus after you, baby. I want to know how much time is spent looking in between like couch cushions and underneath bed, looking for like hidden things of that nature. Of that, that nature. There has been some searches, like a. Uh, like a treasure hunt, you know? I haven't found anything just yet. I found cleaning supplies, which is not as fun, no. but whatever. Maybe that, maybe that answers that part yeah, yeah, of the question. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> womp womp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's up next for you guys after Warp Tour? Uh, we're going to take some time off, and uh, we are maybe looking at doing a headlining run maybe in October or something like that. And um, next year, I'd like to go to Europe, South America, and Japan, do stuff like that. Cool, let's go. Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. Right. Stay tuned for much more from Kendiri. This is Jackie. Thanks to Chorus FM and One Avenue.